Part 1, Wallpaper Groups Let's talk about pattern. And symmetry. Symmetry. In. Pattern. A pattern can be symmetrical in several ways. It can repeat itself with copies in a direction. Which is called translational symmetry. A pattern can also be mirrored. Called reflectional symmetry. If you combine the two, it will be a glide reflection. Another symmetric repetition is rotation, rotational symmetry, which looks the same when you rotate it. This is called a six-fold pattern, it can rotate six times within a circle. Each type has its underlying structure. When you move it, each point in this structure will always fit another point. They have, translational symmetry. There are only 17 different combinations to form groups of symmetrical repetitive pattern. These are called wallpaper groups. Six folds have two wallpaper groups. But notice that there are no groups for five folds. This is because it's not possible to rotate five fold and achieve translational symmetry. The points don't add up. Take a look at the pentagon. It can't cover the plane as a triangle square and a hexagon can, as it leaves gaps. This visual discrepancy, as well as, the lack of mathematical logic, makes the five-fold patterns, most interesting. Part 2, Quasi Crystals, A Crack in the Universe Symmetric pattern can be found in nature. The structure of atoms in matter is ordered, and repetitive in three dimensions. They form crystals. In 1895, Wilhelm Röntgen, discovered X-rays. He won the Nobel Prize in 1901. In 1912, X-ray diffraction enabled scientists to see the pattern of crystals. The new field of study was called, X-ray crystallography. Only one, two, three, four and six fold structures were found. The order of nature was intact. To D, five fold. Until the race to cover the plane. A periodically started in 1974, when Professor Sir Roger Penrose, discovered tiles that could cover the plane in two dimensions and still generate a five-fold, aperiodic pattern. It actually started, in 1962 when logician, Hao Wang, introduced the domino problem with colored square tiles. In 1964, his student Robert Berger, managed to solve the problem with 20,426 tiles. Four years later, Donald Knuth, managed to do it with only 92 tiles, and in 1969 Raphael Robinson used only six tiles. But, it was Fenrose, who managed to do it five-fold, using only four tiles in 1974. Two years later he had scaled it down to only two tiles, the thin, and thick rhombus. If we are going to be really picky, 
Then it all started in 1619, by Johannes Kepler's publication, The Harmony of the Worlds, in which he discusses harmony in geometrical forms, and cover the plane with five-fold tiles. 3D, five-fold. In theory. Theories about the possibilities of three-dimensional five-fold pattern in real-life crystals, started to emerge. In 1981, crystallographer Alan McKay, published a paper in which he used Penrose tiles in three dimensions to predict this forbidden symmetry. Quasicrystals. In theory. In 1983, theoretical physicist Paul Steinhardt and mathematician Dov Levine, introduced their theory and coined the term quasicrystal in their paper that came out a year later. The phrase quasi, is a reference to the quasi-periodic order of the atomic structure. Quasicrystals contain atoms packed in a pattern that cannot be repeated. All three were awarded the Buckley Prize in 2010. Synthesize quasicrystals in real life. The use of a new technology, transmission electron microscopy, for diffraction patterns, increased after World War II, but it took until 1982, before Professor Daniel Schechtman discovered tenfold pattern in matter, as seen in this electron diffraction pattern picture he took of a synthesized aluminum manganese alloy crystal. He published his findings in 1984, and hell broke loose. His discovery would change a fundamental idea of how matter is structured. Many scientists had hard time accepting this what they thought, flaw in nature. He got support from Steinhardt, and slowly the new ideas got accepted, especially when crystals, big enough for X-ray diffraction, had been synthesized in 1987. Since the original discovery, hundreds of quasicrystals have been reported and confirmed. Finding natural quasicrystals in real life. The original theory suggested that quasicrystals could form naturally, so Steinhardt, together with his student, Peter J. Liu, initiated a large scale search for natural quasicrystals around the year of 2000. The team was joined by Italian scientist, Luca Bindi, in 2007, then curator of the mineral collection at the Museum of Natural History of the University of Florence. In early 2009, the first example of a natural quasicrystal was discovered in the basement of the museum, in a rock sample from a 4.5 billion year old meteorite made of catarchite coming from the Kauriak Mountains of Far Eastern Russia. Icosahedrite In 2010, the International Mineralogical Association accepted the quasicrystal as a new mineral named icosahedrite. Rare rocks from outer space. And that beautiful shimmering guy there, that's from the Katirka meteor that fell in Siberia in 2011. It's a quasi-crystal with five-fold symmetry called icosahedrite. Meaning? It is the only known object in the universe with that symmetry. Nothing like it exists on Earth. Shimmering, one of a kind. Like you. Still, the findings were questioned. And the samples have been used up. So to verify their work, they went on an expedition to the Kauriak Mountains in 2011 to find more samples of icosahedrite. So far, nine new samples have been found. Material Science In material science, quasicrystalline principles can be found as reinforced coating, like frying pan or surgical tool, and additive manufacturing, like 3D printing. It also shows promise in camouflage. 
perhaps we can in the future see, shape-shifting Terminator T-1000 robots, or a Harry Potter invisibility cloak. Let's recap. And, we will end up, at Islamic Pattern Let's go back to 2007, when Peter J. Liu, found that many of the artwork in Islamic architecture were quasi-crystalline. It turns out, five-fold patterns were created, way before Kepler, in the Middle East. After studying existing pattern in mosques, as well as the top copy scroll, Lu found that there is another way to tile Islamic pattern. Part 3. The Top Copy Scroll The Top Copy Scroll, is an incredible historical document. It's a Middle Eastern instruction for creating architectural patterns. It was compiled during the Timurid era, around 500 years ago. The scroll, is almost 30 meters long and consists of 114 patterns. 16 of these panels have a five-fold pattern. In 2007, the physicists Peter J. Liu and Paul J. Steinhardt used the panel 28 to define five tiles as Gira tiles. Lu, made the case that tilings have been a crucial part of the creation of these historical patterns. This claim is controversial, as it is seen as diminishing the great work of art these patterns are, when reduced to designing just five tiles. This view disregards the complexity by which these tiles are puzzled together. I'm not so sure they did use a tiling method to create the pattern, but as these panels in the top copy scroll have carefully marked lines for the pattern as well as the tiles, it indicates that they at least use tiling method to get a better understanding of the possibilities, so they easier could plan and design their masterpieces.